Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions Module 6 that is Chemical Kinetics. In the previous lecture, we covered the fundamental chemical reactions and tried to find out what are the different reactions that are possible. Now, with our next viewpoint, we are trying to study the reaction mechanisms and in some particular specific mechanisms, hydrogen, oxygen systems, then uh, nitric oxide formations, carbon monoxide formation, all these things. And in fact, typically these are the reactions that occur when the fuel reacts with the oxygen or air. But before you go for to those aspects, let us understand some of the theoretical aspects of reaction mechanisms and I call these theoretical reaction mechanisms is the part 1 and in the part 2 of this reaction mechanism, we are going to cover some practical examples of certain reactions how it occurs in reality. So, let us start the first one that is reaction mechanism part 1 and in this lecture, uh, we are going to brief out the global and elementary reactions which we covered in our previous lecture. Then here onwards we are going to do some approximations. First approximation is steady state approximations and this will tell you I mean how you are going to proceed. Normally the reaction systems are very fast and it is and transient and uh, for such transient situations if I want to do a realistic approximation how I am going to do that. So, that is known as steady state approximations. Now, with this viewpoint, if we want to apply that steady state approximations for unimolecular system, then how it should look like and based on that we can formulate relations among the rate coefficients. Then moving further, we will be discussing something about chain and branching reactions because normally when the reaction occurs, we see a global reactions, but there are many elementary reactions that occurs in the background and normally many species gets formed and they get also destroyed during the reaction process, but in a global form they do not really appear and uh, such things they are termed by the either chain reactions or chain branching reactions, all those concepts will be dealt with. And most important thing we will be talking about a chemical time scale. Like when you talk about a time scale, like when a somebody, uh, some object is moving with certain velocity, we have some time scale either in the terms of hour, minutes, or seconds. But when you deal with the chemical reactions, what are the time scale we are talking about? Normally, those reactions are in the milliseconds or less durations. So, that means that event takes place in very short duration time scale and we call this as a time scale and how do you quantify this time scale. So, this is this part we are going to define today. Then last part is that partial equilibrium. Many a situations what happens some reactions are very fast and uh, during and some reactions are also slow and some radicals also form in between. Now, what happens is that in the study of partial equilibrium which that means the reaction has, has not reached the final chemical equilibrium state, but we can pair out some of the intermediate reactions in such a way that as if a complete equilibrium uh, situation can be modeled. So, this has also some many benefits because it almost resembles the final form of equilibrium conditions. So, those concepts are termed as partial equilibrium. So, this is all about the overview of this uh, lecture number 24 that is reaction mechanisms and here we will be dealing with the only theoretical aspects. So, if you understand our reactions in our last class, we discussed about global and elementary reactions. What we have told is that one mole of well when it mixes with A mole of oxidizer, it gives B moles of combustion products. So, from which we can find out what is the rate of fuel consumption 
in the form of global rate coefficients and the concentration of fuels and oxidizers. So, this we see in a global form and we call this as a global reactions. Besides this, there are possibilities that there may be some intermediate reactions that may take place and those reactions are called as elementary reactions and they can be unimolecular, bimolecular or termolecular. So, we have given the examples and for each of the reactions we can define their rate coefficients in this expressions. And now, with this viewpoint, let us see that how you are going for a steady state approximations. So, normally if you have seen this either elementary or global reactions, they are unsteady in nature. So, in under what circumstances we can assume a steady state conditions. So, what happens is that during the formation of a given or elementary reactions, some of the radicals they form at the same time those radicals also get destroyed. Although this rate of formation and rate of destruction is a tangent phenomena, but how you are going to model is that we need to find out that at what rate it forms and what rate it destroys and with respect to that we can make some balance so that we can say that what is the steady state concentration for that species. So, how do you do that? So, to do that we need to analyze certain equations. So, one particular example in this process I can explain is that a formation of nitric oxide and this is fundamentally known as Zeldovich reaction mechanism. So, here what happens is that during the nitric oxide formations we can say O oxygen atom can react with nitrogen atom to form NO plus N. So, this is a very typically a slow reactions and we can say its rate coefficient as K1. And when this N forms, it can again react with oxygen molecule to form NO plus O. So, this is another reaction for which the rate coefficient is K2, but it is a fast reaction. But in this process what happens when the reaction gets initiated, the radical atom what we have mentioned here that the radical is formed and destroyed. So, there is a formation of radical destruction and uh, also there is a so, basically the rapid in a rapid initial build up of concentration radical is destroyed rapidly as it is formed. So, that rate of formation and rate of destruction are equal. So, with this philosophy let us see our radical is nitrogen atom and we want to find out what is the rate of production of nitrogen atoms and this nitrogen atoms uh, appears in the both the reactions and one for slow reaction other for fast reactions. So, from this we can find out the concentration of nitrogen or rate of production of nitrogen atom with respect to time. We can find out based on the rate coefficients K1, K2 with their respective concentrations. So, if you look at the fast reactions K1 is the forward reactions and if you look at the second reaction K2 is the forward reaction. So, there is a negative sign here because nitrogen atoms appears here in the reactant side in the second equation. So, based on this we can say this now from this equation when I say steady state concentrations I can make this term 0 that means steady state concentration of nitrogen atom I can make it 0. So, based on that we can replace this nitrogen atom as the steady state concentration of nitrogen. From this we can frame a equation uh, what is the steady state concentration of nitrogen atom which is a function of K1 and K2 and oxygen concentration nitrogen molecule concentration and oxygen molecule concentrations. And we can differentiate this equation to find out what is the steady state how the steady state concentration changes with time. Now, the beauty of this approximation is that instead of solving this particular equations it is easy to solve this steady state concentration equations in this form. So, this particular concept which we are going to use in the subsequent mechanisms. Now, let us see how this concept we are going to apply for a unimolecular reaction systems. When I say unimolecular reaction systems, there are two possibilities. We can say that when some species A is reacts with some molecule, it performs a a star plus m. What is this happens is that 
So, basically during the reaction process the molecule A collides with a third body as a result of collision there is an increase in vibrational or rotational kinetic energies of the molecules and this goes to a elevated state and we call this as an energized molecule A star. So, basically A plus M it gives A star plus M, M remains same for which the rate coefficient is K. Now, when the A star is formed again it can react with M to form the A plus M. So, it is a maybe same reaction which is getting reversed. So, you can say K D means it is a reverse of K. E. This is one part, other part is what we see globally is that we get the products P. So, A star gives the product with this unimolecular coefficient K U N I. So, from this equation we can frame from that the rate of formation of the product P d P by d T is K uni into concentration of A star. Now, if you look at these three reactions 1, 2 and 3 sorry 1, 2 and 3 these three reaction we can find out what is the net production in this process. So, d A star by d T we can find out from the first reaction with K react red coefficient K E into concentration of A into concentration of A and for the second reaction it is minus K D E into A star concentration of A star into M minus K U N I E concentration of A star. So, why this negative sign because A star appears in the reactant side whereas, the first equation A star appears in the product side. So, when you have framed this particular equations then we can find the steady state concentration of A star. So, here we make the approximation of steady state approximation making this d A star by d T to be 0 and after that we can make st steady state concentration of A star in the form of two parameters the numerator is K E into A into M denominator is K D into concentrator of M, M in plus K U N A. So, basically we have now used the steady state approximation to find the steady state concentration of A star. Then further we have to move further in a different perspective like if you look this particular equation again third reaction which is a global and you try to find out what is the rate of product formation d p by d t. Then we can write from this equation as k u n i i into concentration of A star. Already we find the steady state concentration of A star. So, by putting this equation in this equation here we get the expression of formation of products concept is d p by d t uh, is equal to k e into concentration f a into concentration of m divided by ratio of k d e by k u n i i con to concentration of m plus 1. So, this is what we get and our main philosophy is that when you look at the reaction point of view reaction occurs at certain pressure and temperatures and we will see that how these equations gets affected at different regimes of pressure and temperatures. So, uh, one case is that if the pressure is increased concentration of M becomes higher. So, many terms of these equations can be neglected and through this process we can find out the validity of these equations with certain regimes of pressure mainly for pressure. So, what we look at is that uh, we have already arrived at this particular expressions and this particular expression has rate coefficient of these elementary reactions. But when you take the overall reactions what you see are in a global reactions A gives the products and for this the rate coefficient is defined as k apparent. So, basically the we call this is a global rate coefficients and we can write this as k minus d A by d T into k apparent into concentration of A. By comparing these two equations and we can find out what is the expression of apparent molecular rate coefficient or unimolecular rate coefficients in terms of the concentration of M and uh, the rate coefficient of that in the elementary reactions. 
So, this concentration of M is we want to get eliminated because normally there is no role of M in the global reactions. So, this needs to be eliminated. Now, when this needs to be eliminated? For example, when the reaction appears at very high pressure, then this uh, the denominator part this particular term gets dominated. So, we can write this denominator as K d e divided by K u e into concentration of m. So, that this concentration of m gets cancelled from the numerator and denominator side. So, we can find the expression apparent rate coefficients as a function of the rate coefficients in their elementary systems. Okay. Now, when the reactions are occurring at very low pressure, when pressure close to 0, so only the first reactions is dominated. So, means at low pressures you need not worry about the rate coefficient k d and k unimolecular rate coefficient. And this approximation tells that what is the link between the global rate coefficient that is in this case is k apparent and the rate coefficients in their individual unimolecular steps or reactions. Okay. So, this philosophy also can be extended for bimolecular and termolecular reactions, but we are not going into details of those aspects. But what we have seen is that how steady state approximation helps us in finding out the unimolecular reaction mechanism steps. Then we will move to the new concept that is chain and chain branching reactions. So, in fact, about this chain reactions I have already explained in the previous lecture and in fact, the chain reactions is very vital because for many chemical processes and it has lot of importance to the combustions. Uh, normally, the reaction proceeds with the formation of certain radicals, although those radicals or those molecules have no role, but they are uh, called as chain initiation systems that will accelerate further sequence of events of the reactions. So, the chain reactions involve the production of radical species that subsequently react to produce another radical and this process goes on. This sequence of event continues till the reaction involving the formation of stable species of two radicals break down the chain. Then we come across the chain branching reactions and it involves the formation of two radical species from the reaction that consume only one radical. So, in the chain reaction radical species are formed. In the chain branching reactions it also gives multiple number of radical species. So, it gives that means, one forms and it subsequently accelerates the next chain and this we call as this has keeps on branching. For example, when oxygen atom is formed in some form and if it sees H2O, it can form this branch OH and OH. So, everywhere we have O and H2O, it will have OH radicals formation. So, these are called chain branching systems and this OH will again react with some O atom or some other atom to form another component. So, this branching process keeps on happening and so in the system of chain branching it is possible that concentration of radical species can build up causing rapid formation of products. Although it starts with a chain initiation and after this branching when subsequent number of radicals are formed it accelerates the chemical processes and some point of time they take the complete hold of the entire reaction mechanism systems or they have a dominance of overall reaction steps. So, in fact, this is the concept that the chain branching reactions are responsible for a flame being self propagating and are essential ingredient for the combustion chemistry. So, in the combustion viewpoint, we see if you want to have retain a sustained flame then we must keep on generating this chain branching systems and the flame can propagate on its own. Many a times what happens this chain branching or systems have serious consequence may be they are basically 
create an explosive species. For example, uh, when we have hydrogen and oxygen, when they exist in molecule form and they are do not oxidize, then there is no question but they are safe. But as long as they start reacting through this branching systems, they can lead to explosive behavior of the mixtures. We will explain this fact when you discussed in the our next lecture regarding uh, the application of the reaction me mechanisms. Then moving further, let us understand how you want to illustrate, how you want to see or view this chain initiation or chain propagation mechanisms. So, if you look at global reactions which you normally see A2 plus B2 in general gives 2 AB, it is a hypothetical reactions and for this 2 AB formations there may be series of a sequence of events. So, first we may have and the A 2 with some by colliding with some molecules it can form A plus A plus M and this A again can when it sees B 2 it can form A B and this A B when it says again A 2 it can form A B plus A. So, through this process A B gets concentration gets built up and when the chain terminates finally, what remains is A B. So, A all A plus B plus M should be merged with A B and uh, this M vanishes and through this process we get different rate coefficients and we need to find out what are the relation among them and those relations can be built up with the knowledge of the equilibrium products. Then another important aspect that we are going to discuss is the chemical time scale. So, we all aware of the time scales, time scales is normally represented either in hour, meter, second, year depending on the nature of the event. But in the chemistry we see the time scales in a very uh, short duration phenomena or it is a very small event. So, how do you view this? Now, we have unimolecular, bimolecular, termolecular reactions and all of them will have a different time scales. And if at all you need to define a time scale, how do you quantify this? So, this is the basic philosophy for determining the chemical time scales in a combustion process. The analysis of combustion process requires precise knowledge of chemical times relative to convecting mixing time of importance. So, what it means is that, so when the combustion phenomena um, normally takes place, either it is has to be done through a pre-mixed mode or diffusion mode and the flame gets established and it keeps on propagating and to keep it in a sustained mode, we need to find out that fuel and air mixes properly and this mixing process has some finite time. At the same time, during the mixing process, uh, it may so happen that, but your chemical time scale, so during the mixing process and chemical time scales they should be at par. That means, if your chemical time scale is in milliseconds, your mixing time should be in the similar durations. So, that we can ensure that maximum fuel is burnt. So, the knowledge of precise knowledge of chemical time scale is very vital. So, for that purpose we need to find the expression for characteristic time scale to be formulated for the elementary reaction that is unimolecular, bimolecular, termolecular reactions. So, let us start with an assumption that we are looking at a unimolecular reactions. So, when I say unimolecular reactions element A gives the products with its apparent molecular rate coefficient k apparent. So, we can find an expression that how the rate of the concentration of A changes because it is negative sign says that concentration drops with time and that is equal to k apparent into concentration of A. Now, this particular equation can be integrated to find out A into T concentration of A into T is equal to initial concentration of A that is at the beginning and it is e to the power or exponential e to the power minus k apparent T into T. Now, here we introduce the term what is called as chemical time scale or many times you call as characteristics chemical time and it is the time required for concentration of A 
to fall from its initial value and this initial value means a 0 to have value equal to 1.8 times of its initial value. So, concentration of A when we multiply by this, so we will have initial concentration which is A 0 is equal to 1 by E. So, by this definition why it is called 1 by E because with this number the log this logarithmic expression gets simplified. Then from this by putting this expression here we can write exponential of minus k apparent into instead of t we can replace with tau chemical it is 1 by e. So, from this we can find for a unimolecular system chemical time scale is equal to 1 by k apparent characteristic this is what we call as a characteristic time scale. Now, uh, in the same context the expressions for chemical time scales for bimolecular and termolecular reactions can be obtained. So, in a bimolecular reactions with the same philosophy we can have expressions tau chemical because in a bimolecular reactions we require two species concentration of A concentration of B it gives C and D and we need to find out the chemical time scale for A. So, first term should be A. Now, when I write this chemical time scale uh, this expression refers to for the chemical time or characteristic time scale for species A. For this species A we need to find what is the initial concentration A 0. And similarly, if the reaction is termolecular then we ne also need to find out the first term that is species A and this refers to this is characteristic time scale for the species A. So, in for a simple compression uh, compressed simple system at constant temperature the third body concentration I B is constant. So, the rate of expression is mathematically identical for bimolecular systems. So, basically bimolecular and trimolecular they remain same what remains the final expressions is that when the concentration of B much much greater than A 0 this chemical time scale refers to a very simple expressions for unimolecular reaction and for termolecular reactions. Now, if you look at these two particular reactions and if you compare the original reaction A plus B is equal to C plus D and A plus B plus M is equal to C plus N, then both chemical time scale at characteristic time scale for bimolecular and termolecular reactions appears to be same only is just a difference in the concentration. Now, next topic of discussion that we are going to explain is about partial equilibrium. Many a times what happens complete equilibrium analysis may not be feasible in certain situations to why because some reactions are very fast and some reactions are slow. Uh, many a times forward reactions are fast reverse reactions are slow that is because for example, when you say term molecular reactions they are basically chain terminating mechanisms. So, that is the stopping time. So, this whatever uh, species have formed they try to recombine and settle down. So, when this happens it is almost uh, the analysis may be difficult if you wait till the uh, complete equilibrium situations. What has been a uh, probable or a feasible approach is to consider partial equilibrium. So, for this consideration we say the fast and slow reactions has to happen such a way that uh, uh, and they can happen in forward and reverse fashion. Now, out of all the reactions in a given system one can pair out some particular reactions that a uh, gives similar products or same products. For example, in this situation when A reacts with B 2 it gives A B and vice versa B can react with A 2 it can give A B plus A and both the reactions can form the species A B and in the both the cases we can pair them out. So, that can be considered as a one single pair by while doing so it is logical to assume that rate of forward reaction and rate of 
reverse reactions are known and you can express them in terms of their equilibrium constants. And from this it is possible to evaluate the concentration of the actual reaction which is occurring. So, actual reaction which is this is A plus A B plus M is equal to A 2 B plus M. So, A 2 B is the real need of our requirement for which we need to find out. So, from this to get this reaction we need information about the concentration of A, concentration of A B, concentration of M. So, these individual concentrations can be formulated by assuming through what we call as a pair mechanism and they fall under the criteria of partial equilibrium approximations. So, by treating fast reactions as if they were equilibrated this simplifies the chemical kinetics by eliminating the need to write the rate reactions for radical species. What it means is that when the elementary reactions get started or chain gets built up, chain initiation has been done, branching has been done and through this that a radical has been formed. So, we need to make a partial equilibrium assumptions to find out the equilibrium concentration for the final species. And this process avoids the need to write the rate equations for individual uh, radical species. And here I need to try to emphasize there are some reactions which are paired and they are called as supple reactions. And because these radicals the species are supple among those reactions between the reactants and products. And this helps us to find out which is a faster reaction. Faster reactions are normally bimolecular reactions in the forward or reverse fashion and slow reactions may be term molecular reactions because they are in the phase of recombination or rearrangement or the reaction those reactions settle down soon and they are very slow. Okay. With this we come to the end of the lecture and based on our understanding we will try to solve a numerical problem. So, this numerical problem is all about finding out the characteristic time scale for a certain reaction. So, we have already defined the nature of time scales for unimolecular, bimolecular and term molecular reactions. What has been given is that one particular reaction that is CH 4 reacts with a radical OH and it gives CH 3 plus H 2 O. So, this is one particular elementary or I mean you can say chain initiation or chain branching reaction and for which the rate coefficients are defined in terms of centimeter cube per gram mole and seconds and it is a function of temperatures 10 to the power 8 into T to the power 1.6 exponential minus 1570 by T. And the reaction is happening at one atmosphere, but 1,000, 1,344 Kelvin and this reaction is a bimolecular reaction. Because we have two species CH4 and OH and what has been asked for characteristic time scale for OH. So, basically when we are finding out OH characteristic time scale for OH then we have to rewrite the equation keeping OH first. So, we will write this expression OH plus uh, CH 4 gives rise to CH 3 plus H 2 O. So, this refers to the part A plus B gives rise to C plus D and for this in a generic term we are looking at the characteristic time scale for A and when you do that the basic definition or says tau chemical or characteristic time scale is ln E plus 1 minus E into concentration of A 0 that is initial concentration concentration of B 0 and 
this divided by concentration of B0 minus concentration of A0 into K, K is rate coefficient for bimolecular reaction when the reaction happens in this directions and in our case this K is given us this expression K is equal to 10 to the power 8 T to the power 1.6 exponential minus 1570 by T. Now, putting T is equal to 13544 Kelvin and all the parameters are known, then we can find out K and its K has unit centimeter cube per gram mole second and this number is 3.15 into 10 to the power 12 centimeter cube per gram mole second. Okay. But what other thing we require? We require initial concentration A0 and B0. Now, let us see in our case what is A. So, our case A stands for OH, B stands for CH4 and we need to find out their concentrations. So, OH concentration we can find out and this concentration we have to find out because we have given with the molar fractions. So, molar fraction fraction needs to be converted to molar concentration. And for this we require the expression or information about the pressure and temperatures. So, I, if I can write that conversion and then I can write x OH concentration is molar fraction of x CH4 pressure into R bar T and pressure is x CH4 is given x CH4 is 2.5. 0 1 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 pressure is 1 atmosphere that is 1 0 1 3 2 5 Newton per meter square R bar is 8 3 1 4 uh, joule per kg mole Kelvin. So, you say 8 3 1 4 into temperature is 1344. So, we can get concentration of OH as 1.648 into 10 to the power minus 9 gram mole per centimeter cube and again we require concentration of CH4. CH4 concentration can be written in a similar fashion as x oh sorry here it should be OH and here it should be. So, OH concentration is 1.818 when I put OH concentration is this. So, it is x CH 4 into P by R bar T and this x CH 4 is 2.012 into 10 to the power minus 4 P is 101325 divided by 8314 into 1344. So, it will give OH concentration as sorry CH4 concentration as 1.824 into 10 to the power minus 9 or gram mole per centimeter cube. So, it is OH concentration. So, it is gram mole per centimeter cube. Then we have B0, A0 and the all these terms. So, we can find out T chemical time scale as ln first term is E, E is 2.718 
plus 1 minus e is 2.718 1 minus e means minus 1.718 concentration of a0 a0 is our oh so it is 1.648 into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by oh is 1.824 into 10 to the power minus 9 entire number divided by concentration of B0, B is CH4 that is 1.824 into 10 to the power minus 9 minus 1.648 into 10 to the power minus 9 whole bracket we have K bimolecular reaction this is this number into 3.15 into 10 to the power 12. So, after simplifying this the tau chemical or chemical time scale for OH, OH is your this term is equal to 0 0.28 millisecond. So, this gives the information that in a bimolecular chemical reactions the order of characteristics time scale is about milliseconds and in this case the time scale for OH species is 0.28 millisecond. With this I conclude thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.